So today we're going to talk about do-all rifles. The internet's been talking a lot about one rifle that can do everything lately. Um, so let's talk about if that's actually a thing, in my opinion. So my opinion is that there is not such a thing as a do-all rifle. There is a rifle that can do a lot of things well, but there's not a rifle that can do everything perfectly. Um, you're always going to be making sacrifices um, in order to gain advantages in certain areas. So for example, here we've got an 11.5 build. This build is pretty good from 25 to 500 yards, um, but it's not great at 500 yards and it's not great at 25 yards. So there's sacrifices. <clears throat> so let's talk about um, first what's on this gun and then we'll talk about why I have what I do and um, why this is as close to, I think I'm gonna get to a dual rifle for my purposes. So first starting at the front over here, we do have a Dead Air Sandman S. Um, we have a Surefire M300 with the Vampire head and a dual uh, tail cap so that it can take a tape switch and has a clicky cap in case that tail switch fails or you want to constant on. We've got an at PLC. We've got a unity tap switch here to run both of those units. We have a chopped BCM hand stop. We have a rail and uh, BCM rail and rail panels, BCM QD socket for our slings, um, just a retainer there for slings. Up on our top receiver, we have an ACOG TA01 with a piggybacked RMR, a kill flash, and a QD mount. We do have a rear iron back here just because it, I, I haven't taken it off and it's there. Uh, we do have a Raptor charging handle, we have a BCM bolt carry group inside, magpul bad lever, uh, mil spec trigger, HRF magwell, BCM grip, uh, law folder, and SB tack brace because the ATF is gay. So this is my this is my rifle. This is what I do everything with. Um, I cannot afford to have four or five different AR builds. I can't afford to have a night vision rig and an SPR rig and a CTB rig. So I needed one rifle that could do everything decently. <clears throat> so I chose to go with an 11.5. Um, I believe that I get enough velocity out of that barrel to take it out to a decent amount of range. But again, I'm sacrificing velocity of a longer barrel for the maneuverability and weight of the 11.5 barrel. Um, especially once I got a can, I realized that um, having a 14.5 or 16 inch barrel and then throwing that can on there, um, I'm not saying that it's you can't do uh, closer stuff with it, but it is long and uh, it can be inconvenient for getting in and out of vehicles or doing stuff around vehicles or around buildings, etc. So for me, that 11.5 was my choice. I have taken that from, um, like I said, about 25 meters or 25 yards, sorry, to about 550 yards. Uh, I can do consistently up to four. At 550, I definitely start to fall apart a little bit, but um, I've been pretty happy with my choice there. I've been pretty happy with this night vision setup as well as far as the laser and illuminator. That out PLC is not my first choice or something that I would probably recommend to anyone as a primary laser, but it has served its purpose well and it's what I bought before I probably knew better. I definitely recommend <clears throat> having a secondary IR illuminator um, if you are using night vision. If you're just using an, a civilian laser, um, the civilian illuminators that are incorporated with the laser units are usually pretty lackluster. So having that Surefire Vampire on there is definitely a must for me, as well as a decent switch setup that can activate um, laser and that backup illuminator at the same time is pretty important to me. Um, I've been happy with this rail. It's held my zeros well. Um, it was affordable and it does its job. Moving back from there, the ACOG. Um, I was running the ACOG before it's cool. Right now it's the craze. I've had this one for about a year. I have been very happy with it as long as I have this piggyback red dot here. Um, I have been happy. I chose the ACOG after using uh, T2s and EOTechs with magnifiers, um, including the Unity, whole Unity setup, several different LPBOs, uh, 2 to 10. Um, and just, I finally settled on this, and this is what I've liked the best out of all those units so far. 
Um, again, with the caveat of this red dot optic uh, piggybacked on top. The LPVO is very light and very durable. Um, it has an adequate reticle for shooting out your range. It's very simple. The holds are similar enough. Uh, this specific reticle is made for a 14.5 barrel shooting 55 grain. Um, the 11.5 shooting 55 grain is close enough that I'm able to utilize that. With the piggyback red dot, it's very easy to go from range to close uh, very quickly. And this red dot high like this makes it very easy to use passively with night vision. So I've been a big fan of that. I am, again, we're making sacrifices. I don't get to dial for windage or elevation. I don't get as high of magnification as I could with some other optics. Um, and some other optics would have uh, better reticles as well, such as LPVOs or two to tens. But again, I'm, I'm cutting a lot of weight with this optic and I'm getting a lot of durability. Um, a lot of people don't like to feel the view of the ACOG, um, and that's definitely smaller uh, than a LPVO or 210. But for me, it hasn't been an issue because if I'm using the ACOG, I'm shooting further and I have time to get that proper eye position. And up close, I'm just switching to this RMR, which is just like using, say, a T2 or an ACOG, or uh, I'm sorry, an EOTech. Um, so I have been impressed and happy with that so far. Moving back, we've got the law folder that allows me to. Pop that can off, fold that stock, throw it in a bag if I'd like to, um, or just have it nice and compact for like in the car or anything like that. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of some of the theory behind this. Um, so yeah, again, just to kind of recap, I don't think there's such a thing as a rifle that does everything great, but this is about as close as I've been able to get to one that does everything decently or well. Again, you're always making sacrifices, um, so it's all up to you what you need and what you're willing to sacrifice. This build, well, I've been very happy with it, might suck for what you need to do. You might need a two to 10 on there and a longer barrel because everything you shoot is longer range. You might want a shorter barrel and a 300 blackout uh, because everything you do is gonna be in uh, very close proximity. So keep that in mind as well that no, no, <clears throat> no one else's build is going to be perfect for you you need to pay attention to your specific needs um, but this is my quote unquote do all rifle um, let me know what your guys' rifles look like i'm always excited to learn and see what other people are doing um, but until then i'll see you guys later